going back to his leg kicks because you know both guys are kind of getting picked apart in their own game. You know, right now there's no advantage to either one. If the round stopped right now, how would I call it? I gotta give it a 9-9 round to each guy. Of course, the more Dita does bang up the legs here of KJ Noons, the harder it's gonna be for Noons to launch his punches, particularly that rear hand, particularly the right cross. Dita wants to keep kicking out the outside thigh, keep penetrating on the inside thigh, as we see once again KJ go to the left side of the carcass. Snappy jab upstairs from KJ Noons. You can see Scott Coker there in the background, sitting with HD Dead's own Andrew Simon, and of course, Mike Kogan. Mike Kogan, one of the power brokers for FEG, of course, head of FEG USA, who would have been the man that got KJ Noons on this card here tonight. Nice slip of the punch there from Andre Dida. Four minutes, 15 on the clock, first round, 10 minute round. Peppering with the jab, trying to set the right cross here. He goes for an uppercut instead as KJ Noons misses the target. Dips down to the liver section again. Probing with those long arms, the Brazilian Dita. He's got to throw the legs underneath though. Neither man has an intention to go to ground. It's going to be a striking contest all the way. Dita's got to throw the legs. I don't think he can really be scared that... KJ is going to try and tie up one of the legs and take him down. No, not at this point. Really, you know, here comes the yellow card. Oh, Why oh, though? Wow. What for? Hans, well, have you got any idea what the referee was saying there? He's speaking English nominally. He just said more action. I, I don't understand. I think it's a very active first round. He, and unfortunately, I jumped the gun that way. He didn't pull the yellow card out, but he warned him and said, next time out, we'll pull out the yellow card. So, you know, let's get more action. I think it's because Dean is backing away more than anything and it's, it's it which really doesn't mean he's being defensive this is how he fights he fights coming out of the pocket trying to play a more counter-attacking game at the moment is andre tita there's a nice counter hook that works for him slips on the outside of the jab body shot just caught him on the elbow under three minutes remaining now another counter shot off the right hand hooking the punch from andre dita chad not getting through the forearms I mean, as far as KJ News is concerned, other than the shoes, this is just a boxing match. And he's, a, he's approaching it as such, but the problem is that, that Dita's not standing in front of him, and whenever he gets a shot, he's kind of picking his face with, le with his legs. But Dita's not doing enough leg kicking. He needs to do some more leg kicking to kind of open this up a little bit. Andre Dita has some very impressive knees. He might want to try and bull rush KJ Noons into a corner or against the ropes, lock on a Muay Thai clinch and drill the knees to the body and try and get one up to the head. It could be a game plan here for Andre Dita because at the moment, Noons is just pursuing him around the ring. Nice evasion. There's a good leg kick from Andre Dita. Noons catches him with the right hand, no mustard behind it. Two minutes remaining now. Oh, there's a good left hook. I think I have a feeling we're going to see yellow card in about the next 15, 20 seconds. Just because just the way this fight's going, there's really no particular advantage to either guy. Both guys are working, in my opinion. Uh, but no, there's no clear advantage. I think the ref's going to make it a little bit easier. He must have heard me. There was a Muay Thai clinch and tried to work the knee in the midsection. Andre Tita, it came agonizingly close i want to see more of that snake the hands around the back of the neck control the momentum the body weight and pull that head into the rising knee the meet and greet either dita or his corner heard you because his corner is telling him to throw knees too tita's got to get on the inside here he cannot afford to sit a boxing range with kj noons if he's going to stay on the outside sling the legs or else go on the inside and work the knees He's remaining in that midway point where he's just going to get picked off by this jab and these body shots from KJ. Counters off the ropes, circles, turns back to center in. And rem remaining now in the first round. Double jab from Dita backs off. Doing a bit of a sea biscuit, galloping around the ring here. Right hand was glancing to the orbital bone from KJ. Needs to turn through a little bit more with the punches. Not just throw these arm punches. Ooh, there was a shot to the bread basket. Snaps the jab to the jawline. KJ trying to land that, trying to line up that big sub thumper off the right hand. He hasn't really pulled the trigger though. Dita's corner telling him to knee again here. 
steps in with the leg kick. Forearm guard and Dita again missing an opportunity to raise the knee when KJ had his head down. We cut to the towels. One round down, five minutes remaining. Some blood from the nose of Andre Dita. Frank, how did you see that one on trick vision? I oh, have to give it to KJ News. He was more aggressive. He, he controlled the pace. He, he was striking a lot better and, and stuck with his game plan a lot, a lot nicer than than Dita did. But but really, Dita, if he still uses leg kicks more, he can control the pace of his fight. He's not doing it. Comes up high and catches him with the jaw, but nothing really happens here because KJ is so good at getting out of the way of the striking. Frank, although KJ's been boxing actively, it's been a long way off from mixed martial arts. Do you see any signs of mixed martial arts ring rust at all on KJ here tonight? Well, it's tough to tell because Dita's not really shooting either, but you got to see what would happen if both these guys want to try to take this fight to the ground. What would what would go on if one of the guys shot and really made a real legit t attempt to get into the ground? Would KJ be able to defend itself out or keep it on his feet, or would he be able to get the takedown and put it on the ground? I mean, it just depends on... I mean, both these guys right now, like I said earlier, as far as KJ is concerned, other than the fact that he doesn't have his boxing shoes on, this is a boxing match. As far as, as Dean is concerned, you know, this is just, you know, he's got smaller gloves on, but this is a Muay Thai fight. That's, that's how both these guys are approaching this battle right now. They're not really approaching it as a mixed martial arts fight. Fantastic crowd on hand here. The resurgence of Japanese mixed martial arts in the form of Dream 13 after we put on 45 thousand on new year's eve at dynamite at the saitama super arena and what was the biggest mixed martial arts crowd of 2009 and have a look at the spread here at the yokohama arena very impressive indeed second and final round kj noons and andre dita michael chevello frank trigg hans thompson with you Andre Dita needs to get to work. A little bit more aggression. He's got to come on the front foot. No allow Noons to continually back him up because it won't look good for the judges. And he opens up with the acrobatic techniques. A little bit more step behind him now. Turning back kick to the midsection from Andre Dita. Uchido Gary. Checks the low kick to Noons. Left hook. Again, you see Noons does so effectively what most boxers do, and that's control center in. Force your opponent to the outside. Ooh, there's a sticky left hand from Andre Dita. Noons lining up the body shot. Dita again tried to get the knee in close as Noons went to the liver, hooks him upstairs but caught the forearms. Again, Dieter allowing Noons to back him up. He's got to come forward. He's got to swing the pendulum here, Frank, and be the aggressor. And the, the problem is, too, is that even if this is a style, a backing up style, you know, where you're going to counter punch, knock a guy out as he's coming at you, he's not even, def he's just defending himself. He's not really mounting any kind of offense, so even even this style is not working. So you're right, he's got to change it. He's got to start coming forward, forward, otherwise he's losing this fight. Well, two of the fights that we were going to bet on wouldn't go very far tonight. I've actually gone a lot further than we thought. First of all, Minimal Man and Jimmy Ambrose to start off the night. And certainly here, Andre Dieter and KJ Noons, both Frank and I thought it wouldn't get out of the first round. And here we are with 3 minutes 25 remaining in the second. And it looks like it's going to get out of the second, really, because neither guy's really able to establish their game plan at all to, to force the fight to, to be a finish. Running behind the shots, KJ, but most of those caught the forearms and biceps of Dita. Body shot from Noons. Dita not doing anything here. He counters nicely with the left hand, but it lacked the starch. And one counter shot every 30 seconds or so certainly isn't going to impress anybody as KJ again just digs away to the liver section. Wiping the blood off. Andre Dita here. Of course, you kind of hear KJ in his corner swearing up a little bit. He's, he's upset because he wants, you know, wants this guy to stand in front and trade. He's really not, he's really not trading at all. He's just running away from him. And, and like I said, the running away isn't counterpunching. Like you said, you, you, I think you said to Michael, 30 seconds, one counterpunch every 30 seconds is not going to win you the fight. 
It is time for Andre Tita to stand and deliver here in the ring and not continually be backed up. Again, all the offense is coming from KJ News. And Tita calling him forward. That's okay to do. But you're not going to answer him. Why call him forward? Now Tita comes forward with an overhand right. But he stops. He's going to continue here. It was funny as he's calling him forward to come, you know, come get me, come get me. He was backing up and running away at the same time. So it's kind of a weird dynamic there. You know, come on, let's fight, let's fight. But I'm going to keep backing up. Body shots again from KJ Nunes. If Jim Lampley was commentating, he'd be banging all over that one, Frank Trude. Bang. Bang. <laughs> Ridiculous. That right hand there from KJ. Just peppering away here, KJ Nunes. Inside thigh kick from Andre Dita. He opened up the first round so well with the inside thigh kick, but has seemingly left them from about halfway through the first round until now. Time is now becoming the enemy of Andre Dita. Body shot. Nunes is going to take an easy decision victory here. If Dita doesn't try and go kleptomaniac and steal it. Clips him with the left hand, should have pulled the head down there and worked the knee on Dre Dita. There's a knee from KJ. And again, Dita just backing up. You know, KJ has to be frustrated because he's really trying to bring the fight to him. And Dita's just backing out of it. He's really not wanting to engage at all. Under a minute remaining, it is time for Dita to throw caution to the wind. Step up knee, can no any of the target. Nunes goes to the body, gets countered with the right hand, but he wears it. Half a minute remaining in the fight. Nunes is trying to line up the right hand. He throws a knee. There's the Muay Thai clinch. But Nunes evasive, slips out. Overhand right from Dita. Another opportunity for the knee goes awry. 15 seconds remaining. Dita waits him with the left hand and pokes out the jab. But it's just not happening for Andre Dita. KJ News will take a decision here. It'll be a strike force victory over Dream yet again. And how all hopes will now be pinned on Shinya Aoki against Melendez very soon. Because although they raise Andre Dita's hands in the air, you feel this one's got to go the way of KJ Noon's Frank. Yeah, I think KJ's the one. I mean, there's, I don't see any way how they can give it to Dita. I mean, he didn't do anything. He backed up the whole time. And like you said earlier, he counted every 30 seconds. I mean, there's some good knee in there and tried to try to tie clinch a little bit later, but really doesn't do anything the whole entire fight. Let me just say, Frank, that if it does go the way of Andre Dita, because strange things have happened here in Japan <laughs> quite often, it will be the results of the leg kicks of Andre Dita scoring for him. Seeing that KJ didn't throw a kick for the entire fight, it'll be the leg kicks of Dita should Dita get the knot here. But we both believe it'll be KJ Noons who gets the decision. Yeah, I think KJ did a lot more. He controlled the pace. He blooded him up a lot more. He, he kept his back to the center of the ring the entire time. He kept Dita backing away. You know, just he was more aggressive. He had more striking ability. He, I mean, just everything that went on went, went in KJ Noons' favor. But you're right. Strange things have happened here when it goes to the judges. And like we said, with the double forearm guard that Andre Dita put on and occasionally popping out a punch every 30 seconds or so, well, it was a bit reminiscent of Joshua Clotty recently against Manny Pacquiao. We all saw what happened on that occasion. And on this event, it's KJ Noons who's the Pacquiao and Dita the Clotty. So it should be a decision here to KJ. <laughs> One for KJ Noons. There it is. KJ Nunes, he's on the Strike Force roster. He flies the Strike Force banner here tonight. Strike Force wins again over Dream. And as I said, all hopes are pinned on Shinya Aoki against Gilbert Melendez coming up very soon on that Strike Force show in the US. Not to be for Andre Dita. I'm a little disappointed, I've got to say, Frank, by Dita. And let's uh, give it up for KJ Noons. But Dita just didn't bring it here tonight like we thought he would. No, I thought he'd be a lot more aggressive. I step in the pocket a lot more, keep going forward. And he really didn't do any of that. He, 